Welcome to the Effective Living series. This is your show that brings you the insights to set you off on a great 2022. This week we're focusing on rebuilding families. The Effective Living series is on the theme, Building Back Greater. Last week we spoke about building personally. This week we're focusing on building the family. We'll be talking about finance, fertility, and also food. And today we're talking about meeting emotional needs in building a strong and healthy family. And I have a very exciting guest. She's an educationist. She's been teaching for many, many years. She's also, she's retired now, but she's also a well-known marriage counselor and relationship expert. She's in the person of Mrs. Florasaki. Good to have you. Good morning. Good morning. How morning. are you doing? Very fine. Thank you. It's good to have you back on, on City after a long time. <laughs> yeah, I've not been on the TV, but on the radio. So this mm. is your first time on City TV? Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. How long have you taught in life? Because you, you've been teaching for many years, right? Well, yes. I started teaching in 1971 in the classroom. Wow. And I left in 86. Then I entered there full time. Wow. And I've been teaching since. So you taught for 15 years? Yes. And then you also do counseling? Yes, teaching also in the church. Amazing. <laughs> so these days you have a Doxa temple, but you used to be recovery Baptist for many yeah, years. Yeah, I was in recovery for about 33 years. Wow. <laughs> Amazing stuff. And you, your latest book is on understanding your child's temperament. Yes. That's interesting. Maybe Actually, it's an old book that I reprinted. Is it? Yeah, it's about the third printing also. I see. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll come to that later on, mm -hmm. the, uh, the temperaments that your children have. Today we are talking about meeting emotional needs in building a strong and mm -hmm. lasting family. Why is it important to talk about emotional needs at this time? Yes, because um, in many families, like uh, material needs, physical needs, even spiritual needs are met, but the, most people neglect the emotional area. And it makes people unfulfilled, unbalanced, and it leads to all kinds of wrong behavior. So people behave out of character when their emotional needs are not met. The emotional needs relate to our feelings, just as our body needs water, food, and air to survive. Our, emotional, our emotions also have needs that make them survive and make us balanced people and we help us live healthy lifestyles. Mm. Would you say that the period of COVID, this which has, I think March 2020 till now, put a strain on families? To what extent do you, because some people felt COVID was actually good in a sense that we were staying home together, <laughs> but it's, it's not as clear as, as that assumption. Yeah, it depends on the foundation of the marriage. And the, you know, every family is, based on marriage. It starts with marriage, then builds up into having children and all that. And uh, if people do not learn to live together, to coexist in peace, you know, from the beginning, then as they grow older, it, it becomes even more difficult because when we are courting, actually we all, everybody tries to put up their best. <laughs> so, but when we start living together, then the other side of us, as within the temperaments, everybody is a mixture of strengths and weaknesses. The strengths pull us together. Nobody will say, I don't like you, let's marry. <laughs> so when we marry because we are strength pull us but because everybody has the other side, the wrong side, when we start living together, our true nature shows up and we realize that we are not that compatible. Especially if we are direct opposites. If we are direct opposites, you realize that where you are strong, the other person is weak. And so if you don't, you know, focus on your strengths and learn to live together, but you focus on each other's weaknesses, then obviously you can't coexist in peace. So most people marry for wrong reasons or they don't, you know, maybe get counseling and find out what they're about to enter. They just marry because they're falling in love or they see something good about the other person that they want. And when they start living together, they realize that <laughs> going to the altar is different from living together mm. in reality. So then if we don't work at, yeah. And a lot of people, when we are young and get married, we focus on the superficial, you know, the emotional attraction. I love you. I love you. That's all. But love alone doesn't make a marriage succeed. They don't learn to work, the, work together, work on the marriage, you know, learn to live with each other's weaknesses and things that, you know, rub you on the wrong side. And so after some time, they can't handle their hostility anymore. 
And sometimes even those of us in the church, people can't live together in their own space at home. So they attend every church program. They run away from... <laughs> so a lot of the activity at work at church is actually escape from yes. a dysfunctional home. Yes, in a way. yes, yes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What you said suggests that a lot of people hide who they really are before marriage. You only yeah. discover it when you get into it. Yes. Mm. And sometimes you may not even know you have some, some you know, traits in you until you, you know, experience some situations or sometimes some things come out when you are growing older. You know, when you are young, about to marry, you don't have any cares so much. No children and other things. But when you maybe start having children together, sometimes, you know, handling finances, even raising the children, the influences from each person's side, work issues and all that, they can bring in things you never bargain for. So if you don't learn to live together in peace, to handle, you know, cope with each other's uh, wrong you know, traits, then you will have problems. Mm. You can't live together. That's interesting. Please. So it's fair to say that around this period, there's a lot of emotional strain. But I need you to define what is what emotional needs are, mm. or at least give a bit more elaboration. I know what a financial need is. <laughs> I know what a physical need is. Mm. When you say emotional needs for a healthy family, what are you talking about? When you say emotional, you are talking about conditions or state that make us experience peace and happiness and uh, the needs pertain to feelings you know as i said earlier the body needs food even the, the mind needs in, you know knowledge and other things to keep on going and the emotions too and there are three aspects of the emotional needs we have emotional needs that pertain to all humanity every human being needs those has those emotional needs and it's uh, unconditional love, significance, and uh, security. Unconditional love is that you are loved, accepted, embraced for who you are, and not because you are this or you do this or don't do that. You know, you live with your husband or wife and your children. You know, they love me for just being me. And here, I don't have to do something to deserve their love. It makes you feel, um, uh, uh, you know, at peace. And uh, for children, unconditional love means that uh, parents are friends. So I can be naughty, my father or mother corrects me, and I go back to them. And we women especially have the problem. When a child has misbehaved and you've corrected, the child comes back to you, go away, go away, naughty boy, look at his face, big nose and all that. Emotionally, you are driving them away. So a child should know that even though I've done wrong, I'm still a friend to my, my, pa my father. My mother doesn't reject me because I've been wrong. One time I attended a funeral many years ago, and it was a mother who died. Mm. And one of the <coughs> sons, is a, at that time, was a young engineer. And he said, you, this is what he said about his mother, your laps were always ready, available to sit on. You stood with us even when you knew we were wrong. You helped us with our homework. And I was, you know, <laughs> I was wow. impressed. At, at that age, he still remembers his mother helping him with his, uh, you know, homework and all that. And w w one, another sign is uh, being available. I remember one time I was at home. I, I used to be busy when I was in my 40s. And so, so many things to do. In town. And I was home for once and I was reading. And my daughter, one of my daughters, she's the one that stands speaks for all the rest. She came and took the book from me and said, Mama, as for even when you are home, your mind is somewhere else. <laughs> wow. So, so we, we, we may be there, but we are not available. So uh, availability is there. Uh, you know, it's some, it's something that the children even know. That, okay, my father is a busy person. My mommy is a busy But the little time they have at home, they open up to us. We are able to play with them, talk with them, say what's on our heart and not be afraid. There was, I used to be in the early 80s, I was in a small fellowship with one headmistress. And she told us that one day she asked uh, one of the, the nursery pupils to draw their daddy. And one child just took a pencil and did the zigzag, 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 zigzag. <laughs> and so the headmistress asked her, is that how your daddy looks? Daddy doesn't stay at home. He doesn't live, sleep in the house. Every morning he comes and shouts on us, hurry, 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 oh, hurry, hurry. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So that's the image of the father in the yes, child's Yes, so mind. the headmistress even called him and uh, told him about it. Mm -hmm. So the next uh, uh, emotionality we have is the significance. Everybody wants to 
know that they, they matter. They, they, are, they, are, they are valued, they are worthy, they are important, they are needed. If you are not around, your absence is, is, your presence is missed and something like that. So nobody wants to be a doormat for people to walk on like a you know, rag or something. So that, that need in us, and especially for men. Women look for love, uh -huh, acceptance, and so But men, it's more of the significance. The men need respect. Their greatest emotional need is to be respected. And then the third one is the security. When you have the two, you feel loved and you are respected. You feel secure. So you, you feel at home in your own home. Some children go to school, and when they are coming home, they are afraid because of the way they are treated. I remember I, I counseled a young lady who said, Auntie Flora, I know I'm fallible like anybody. I make mistakes. But when I make a mistake, it's like it has never been done under the sun. And when somebody else makes the mistakes, like, oh, it's one of those things. I do all the donkey jobs in the house. When I need even ice water, I have to ask other children around. They can go to the fridge, take a drink, take a sweet or something. And so that child feels that, um, you know, where I'm not worthy enough. You know, you don't feel happy in your own home. And then the, in the home where there's favoritism, prejudice, uh, they know, everybody knows that uh, Kojo is mommy's darling and Akosua is daddy's darling. So when they need children is something, Kojo, you go and ask mm. mommy. Mm. Uh, Akosua, you go and ask daddy. So it breeds insecurity in the children and they grow to, you know, uh, dislike each other. Sometimes when the parents die and go, they cannot be together because some were preferred to the others and it's very very important and security also means that you set limits to the for the children they know that in our home this is allowed that is not allowed you don't beat somebody for a today and the next day he does it and you don't say anything mm. so <laughs> there must be like consistency the, yeah, in administering punishment yes. yeah and then when they are disciplined they may rebel but they know it is good for them you know, there's this uh, woman, uh, Eugenia Price, who said, a child who has everything done for him and nothing required of him is a deprived child. Mm. <laughs> mm. So you mm. must, a child must be disciplined. And there are some things that children will never, I tell parents that, look, children, your children will never give you, you know, a silver cup or a golden cup while they are growing. It's sometimes it's only when they have grown and even had their own children that they'll begin to appreciate some of the things you did. One of my daughters, that, hey, Ma, so this is why you used to do this, this is why you used to say that. And now she appreciated the one who rebelled the most is the one who appreciates wow. the most now. So that's important. I, I like that. A child who has everything done, done for, for him, him and nothing in, required of, of him, him is a deprived child. Yes, Eugenia Price. That is amazing. Mm. So it, it, you've spoken about love generally. Mm significance mm, and then security. security those are the general Not emotional needs yeah. but are there specific emotional needs for say women in the house yes. for example yes we have a, a, a emotional needs according to agenda or sex so mm -hmm. a, a, a woman or a wife has different emotional needs from her husband so a woman's greatest emotional need is to be loved mm -hmm. but that's why she was created when god did all the creation when he said that it was not good for the man to be alone, so he would make a woman to be helpmate. And the real reason the woman was what to be, be, be uh, you know, for love. She, so a woman thrives on love. For us women, love, love is life and death issue. So you can have five women even struggling over one man, but you can't have the, the other way around. Mm. <laughs> or as the girl says, I if mm -hmm. that's why, but no serious men mm -hmm. will fight over one woman with a future in mind. Mm -hmm. So a woman's greatest emotional need is love, and that's it's not just sex or romance, because when a woman is generally not happy in her relationship or marriage, she doesn't even really care about sex. She may comply if she has to, especially if she depends on the man for everything, but deep in her heart, She's not with it. So love, because the woman wants uh, to feel cherished. So I, I must feel like I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. And women live on the feeling level. It's not just saying with your, ma your mouth and then doing something else. She must really feel that she's loved. She's cherished. She's the most important thing to you. We also, talking is part of a woman's makeup. So she, she longs to be listened to. 
sometimes a woman just wants to pour her heart. And our world is made up of the little, little details that the, your men were, the men's mind were, sh were shaped for big issues of life. So when a, a man is thinking about the dignity, when he's walking, he may not even see a pothole in his path, but the woman can see it and point it to him. So a woman wants to be listened to. And uh, I mean, talking is us. So when we are happy, we talk. When we are angry, we talk. When we are displeased, <laughs> we talk. Uh, here. The woman wants to be listened to. She wants to be understood. We are complex. We don't even understand our own selves. <laughs> so sometimes yeah. a man thinks that communicating with a woman is go to the pharmacy and pay this, mm. uh, go and pay the electricity bill, go and do this, uh, go and do this. That. No, she wants you to sit down, listen. She pours her heart. And most of the things that we care about are little, little things that may not matter to a woman. To a, to yeah, a, to yeah. A man. So a man, sorry, yeah. So uh, like I put on a new dress, say something, <laughs> put on a new shoe. I remember a certain lady was sent to me. And uh, when I asked her, what was it? she said, oh, she wore a new dress and her husband did not see anything. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, really? But in my heart, I was saying, with TV or the papa. <laughs> 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 the man was going through, you know, a, a serious uh, career crisis. So he didn't have time to do that. She should have understood him. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. So that's that. We but do these emotional needs of women depend on temperament? Because I know you've written quite copiously on temperament. So, for example... If you said women generally express themselves through talking, does it not depend on whether she's sanguine or if she's maybe melancholy, mm -hmm. which are two extremes of on the emotional scale? Yes, actually we have, we have emotional needs that uh, relate to our temperaments also. So we have the general or humanity, then we have the gender, sex, and then we have the you know the temperament. So a sanguine woman definitely will talk more than a melancholy woman. Because some queens want attention. Sometimes they shout, scream, laugh loud, just to, to attract attention to them. Or the way they dress. A sanguine woman can dress, you know, wear a glittering, you know, <laughs> a bright dress on a sunny day. Mm -hmm. Or if it's short, it's extra short. If it's a high heels, extra heel, and you have the, you have the you know, uh, bangles around your ankles, big earrings, and all anything that would draw your attention. So a sanguine woman will not pass, and then you will not lift your head. But a melancholy woman, melancholy is like being on the sides. They like, like they love being in the background. Yeah. So at the meeting, for instance, melancholy may not even contribute. But you ask him, oh, madam, or. Oh, say what do you think the wisdom that will come out of them you wonder so why didn't they talk but they don't want to be seen or heard Amazing. Mm. so that's it okay so if talking general about the women's emotional needs to be loved mm -hmm. uh, they live generally on the feeling level mm -hmm. and then talking is one of the key mm -hmm. things what about men what are their emotional needs the man's greatest emotional need is to be respected that is why the bible says in ephesians 5:22 women submit to your own husbands so the first thing is that he's respected so you may be a wife you know you know be, you may dress well uh manage the home well and all that but if you don't respect the your husband he's not a happy man in fact there was a, a survey in america some years back and that they found out that the men who were miserable were not those who had failed in career, business, or profession, but those whose wives did not respect them. And God made the, the, the husband the head of the family unit. And the, if you are the head, you need those under your care to respect you. And the submission, which uh, women don't really like, especially the educated ones, simply means that you obey. You obey when you have to. I mean, if I have to obey my husband, but God is there, I'll, I'll obey God first. So just obey and uh, curtsy to be courteous. You may not have to agree with everything the man says, but there's a way you can say it and you will understand. So admiration, admire the person. I used to tell people that when I was young, <laughs> I was a schoolgirl in the 1960s. My father's contemporaries, they used to wear white shirts for everywhere. You know, for school, for church, for work, 
for funerals, even for what they wear, black suit and the white shirt, the hair. But in our day, the men compete with us in mm -hmm. colors. They also wear multi so, Yeah, so if you don't say it, you don't admire him. Somebody else will admire mm -hmm. You know what that will lead to. Mm -hmm. and they're looking up to him, uh, valuing his suggestions, valuing his ideas and all that. I think, uh, uh, who was it that uh, gave an example? Like a man brought a suggestion that was going to do, then the woman said, You, <laughs> you, <laughs> so you demean him, you demean him. So he likes to be. And if I want to express says that if a, a man has affirmation from his wife, if his wife is loyal, his wife appreciates him, affirms him, makes him feel big, he doesn't have to fight to be seen or you know to prove himself at work or anywhere else. So it's the very the most important because we are a man and a woman who are married are one flesh. So it's um, the, what the other person thinks of is very very important. Like lots of people die, for instance, if a taxi, taxi driver crosses you <laughs> and you say, "My friend, why?" and you say, "Foolish man," mm -hmm. <laughs> you say, "Foolish man." Mm. By the time you get to the office, you don't even remember. But if your wife says the same thing, to be another ball game. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Let's end with children. So you've spoken about generally the women and the men. Mm -hmm. You've written a book on the temperament of children. I'll come to that. But what, what are the emotional needs of children within a family context? Generally? Yeah, children need, as I said, they, 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 they need the, a first, the first one, the unconditional love, the significance, and the security. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they need to be cared for. They need the father and mother's friendship. Mm -hmm. Dobla, I can, when the children are, parents are so approachable that the children can share anything with them. They, they don't get into wrong relationship. They don't get into wrong groups. They don't have, you know, they are not vulnerable to wrong influence. Teenagers, for instance, they, they are the most lonely people because they are um, emotional. Their, their sexual instincts are developing and all that. And they, what their friends think, peer pressure is very, very important to them. So if per, uh, teenagers feel that they are not accepted at home, nobody listens to them, nobody hears them. Especially in some places, they are not even provided for. Some children are made to provide for themselves too early in life. They have to suffer, strive before they even eat. When they do that, then they feel rejected. They feel that they are nobody. And uh, in some places, they even, the children even commit suicide because they feel like life is, there's nothing in life for me. So they, when they know they can come to my mother or my daddy and uh, pull their hearts, it helps them to, you know, uh, stay on course. It mm. helps them to live the right way. And there's a, a special, what do you call it, a relationship between a child and a parent of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a daughter and her father. If that the relationship is not maintained well, it follows into their future, especially in marriage, and it disturbs them. So women, we look to men for security, whether we are wives or daughters. So if a daughter doesn't have a good relationship with her father, it goes a long way. In fact, research shows that many women who are in prostitution, many of the majority of them, it starts from a wrong relationship with their father. Either the father was never there, he was too harsh, he was a bully, he never, uh, you know, provided for them and all that. And then the daughter, uh, you know, uh, son, 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 mother, son mother, mother relationship. relationship, very, very important. Mm. Uh -huh. So we are the, if you are a mother, you are the first picture of a woman to your son. If you are a, a father, you are the first picture of your gender to your, your child. Mm. So what a ch child sees or notices or the, uh, the in, in, for, what do you call it, the picture they form about you is what they know mm. about. They think of all men, uh, you know, mm. they think that all, all men are like you. So if you are harsh to their mother, if you're a father, a father I read that a, a certain lady, she went into lesbianism because the way the father, you know, abused her mother, she didn't think that she would want any man to abuse her that way. So it's very, very important. And sometimes with the women, our children, are not ready to marry and we go to the prayer tent and we bind the devil and all that but maybe your son is looking at the way you treat your husband and she does, he doesn't want to live with a woman who will also 
you know, be a lioness and treat him like that. So it's very, very important. In fact, the best thing a parent can give to uh, parents can give to their children is to love each other, respect each mm. other, and treat each other well. Mm. Just finally, <laughs> how important is it to know the temperament of your child? Because um, I think we generally raise children the same way. They are to be quiet. Children are to be seen and not to be heard. So when adults come, children run away and go and sit in the corner. Their opinions are not sought. They are supposed to eat what they are given. We don't <laughs> listen to them. That's generally how a lot of children were brought up. Now you've written about temperament, the special needs of children. How do you even begin to analyze your children to know how different they are? And how do you apply that in meeting their emotional needs? Mm -hmm. First of all, you look out for... Uh, their strengths and then their weaknesses mm -hmm. and then sometimes to guess what uh, maybe career or profession they might follow you look at the things they take interest in if you have a child who is always concerned about you when you are sick daddy should I bring you water should I be maybe the medical person if you have a child that wants likes pouring water into containers <laughs> like that a physicist or chemistry person coming and that kind of thing. But somebody who likes, uh, uh, t my, my daughter tells me that her, uh, her daughter, little that she's about, uh, I say is about um, five, six years. And she likes teaching, teaching just <laughs> into the air. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so she, she will see her, like, maybe her toys and other she likes teaching. And I'm she's a teaching teach her characters in the yes, toys. Yes, yeah, so it seems that there, there's a, that spirit of teaching. Because I'm a teacher and the, uh, her father's, uh, her, fa her grandfather on her father's side is a professor. Wow. And the mother, too, is a teacher. So it's like she has, she has all her grandparents teaching. are teachers. So that spirit is in her. <laughs> you like a, a child who likes gathering others mm. and then uh, instructing them, giving them instructions. So that's a leader, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, political or any other. And then uh, you see a child who just gather others and start dancing, showing all kinds. That's uh, an entertainer. A performer. <laughs> Maybe a media person. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So it's more okay. observation. More observe observing. what they want to do, mm. and then you can tell where their tendencies are. Yes. So mm. you, you, it helps you to treat them as individuals and not collective. I have one daughter who is a typical melancholy. When she was growing, I didn't. You just have to raise your voice, and you get her to comply. There's the other one who has a bit of choleric in her, and she had to scrub a lot of time. That thankfully, when she grew up, scrubbing is very easy for her. She scrubs a lot. <laughs> mm. And it's all because of the way yeah, yeah. they were brought up. So, so finally, if there's an emotionally damaged family, what do you recommend? How do they start? The family is apart. They don't talk to each other. They are not in a good place. Mm. What's, your, what's your recommendation for how they go about healing themselves? One person will have to... Start praying, mm. praying for all of them. It takes divine intervention for the Lord to heal the emotions. And if one parent or both parents come to know Christ, uh, it's, it's, that's a plus. So when you have Christ inside, the Holy Spirit is in you, he will be guiding. Mm. And some of these healings will take... Uh, and then there's a deep, deep need inside of every human heart. There's a vacuum in every human heart that can only be filled with Christ there. So it doesn't matter. Uh, John 14, 27, Christ says, my, life, my peace I give you, my peace I live with you, not as the world gives, give I you. So there's that peace that only Christ can, you know, give us. So you can be anything, you can acquire anything, but without Christ, you see that there's that deep, deep, deep void inside that has not been filled. And sometimes uh, it's one of the reasons that, uh, uh, you know, spouses fight. Because you think that if when you fill that space or vacuum and that, uh, you know, void inside, you think it's your wife who is not meeting that need. And though she, you, you have to throw her away and find another one or your husband. And the thing is that no human being can fill that void inside of that. It takes only a relationship with Christ. Wow. So when Christ comes in, because either there are people who have, you know, divorced and other things because they blamed each other for not filling that void inside them. And that's the only Christ can do that, Amazing. no human being. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a great note to end. Thank you very much, Mrs. Flora Saki, uh, an educationist, a uh, counselor of many years, an author as well. We've been talking about meeting 